Hello and welcome back to the Flower Gold Wizard Channel. I'm Jason. That's Rigby. We're part-time gold prospectors based in Wisconsin. Today we're at Nugget Lake County Campground in western Wisconsin looking for some gold. We've been here before and we have found great gold here. There's a couple of different cricks. Uh, you just got to know where to look. Um, there's some really nice scenery around here and I'll pan around some of this stuff here. It's really nice to look at that I don't see in my part of the state. So it's well worth just the visit to see uh, these beautiful rock cliffs. So we're going to meet some people up the creek a little ways. Back in a bit. And before me and Rigby beat feet, go meet our friends. I just wanted to give you a little, a little show of some of the scenery around here. It is really nice. That's that's up there quite a ways. Here's some really nice bedrock cliff walls here, and there's a little trail up there for viewing and whatnot. Yeah, it looks like somebody built a little dam down here, and on the way in, I noticed there's a few dams built here and there for people to run their run their equipment. So we've got quite a walk. We're gonna get uh, get boot scooting here. Back in a bit. All right, video update number one. I walked up the creek quite a ways, and I did meet a couple of people I was looking for, and we kind of uh, went our separate ways just a little bit because I wanted to do a little bit of prospect and try to find the best spot I could. Now, now this doesn't look like anything you know spectacular looking or nothing jumps out at me and says, "Hey, there's gold here." But there are a couple of nice looking, uh, real sharp corners in here. Uh, Rigby stopped and sniffed it out, so there's another great indicator. And there is a little spot here I can set up my sluice if I do find something fantastic. So I'm gonna do a couple of test pans. There's, uh, looks like there's some nice deposits kind of heaped up right there. And this is uh, on an inside bend, and I'm standing on this inside bend here. And uh, you know some of this stuff over here is sand. We do have one gentleman over here uh i think i think my best bet for the first couple of shovels is going to be on this inside bend and if not i'll work towards the middle of the creek see if we can come up with something back in a bit all right video update we did our first uh first pan it's actually two pans condensed down into one and i started right on this inside bank right here this uh this is a big old probably an old deposit the creek probably used to be back in there a ways but i'm not digging through three feet of overburden to get down to this creek when i'm standing right in it so i took a shovel full right out of right in there and we got 12 little pieces of gold which is pretty darn good in my book there's nothing uh crazy big in there there's a couple you can see bigger than the next when it's a neighbor there like that one there that's a tiny little flea poop that one there is a grasshopper poop so i think uh it's probably going to be worth it to set my sluice up so i'm going to invest a little bit of time right there and i'm going to it's going to take all the water that's flowing down this creek to run my my big uh, vdr sluice that i brought along with me today so let me get that baby set up and we're going to start pounding some dirt back in a bit well, it doesn't appear that I'm going to be able to run my screen uh, to classify on top of my sluice. And that's just fine. Um, I just can't get quite enough water. And oddly enough, there's there's no clay here. So I'm kind of digging in gravels unless I got to get down just a little bit further. Because if I had clay, I could patch up a lot of these holes here that I just can't with uh, light wash sand. It just gets blown right up and out of there. But I did get it running... Uh, with enough water that I can classify and just scoop it on there real fast because that that mat uh, really chews through some material too that um, infinity prospecting Devon gold VDR mat <laughs> so I'm gonna stay working right here where I have been right in front of my shovel there I'm gonna classify a pail and we'll pick it back up when I'm scooping back in a bit look at him he's already napping <laughs> All right, I've got about half a pail all classified down, and that didn't take long at all. Uh, the lack of clay just absolutely makes makes this process a lot easier. And to, to be honest, I was surprised I found a dozen pieces in that that uh, test pan we did. 
So I'm gonna start scooping this on here. This is the very first scoop going through here. And it's not running, you know, exorbitantly fast. I think uh, we're probably gonna be doing real well. You can kind of see all that material around, around in there, whirling around, all that light stuff. But eventually the black sand will get trapped in there and gold if there is any. So let me start feeding this baby and we'll pick it back up in a bit. All right, Rig? Back in a bit. Update 4,075. I ran that one pail through there and I noticed something kind of odd. There's very, very little fine black sand. There's lots of black looking material in there, but it's just, it's not what I'm used to uh, where I go. So I'm gonna see what that's all about. I'm gonna do a cleanup after that one pail just to make sure we're on the gold because there should theoretically be at least a dozen pieces in there. So let me get the pail ready and we'll do a cleanup. Back in a bit. All right, here's our cleanup right here. I got the sluice up and cleaned out of there. And that sand, that black sand is all real, real coarse black sand. Look at that. There's a bunch of little garnets in there and there is a little bit of gold. Now, is that entirely impressive? No. Uh, there's about 14 pieces in there. So I think there's gold right there, obviously. I'm gonna slide down to where the bigger rocks are starting to deposit in this pinch point right here and possibly work down here just a little bit because I think the clay, I did not hit clay over there. The clay is gonna be shallower here than it is where I was because it, the creek narrows down here and it's pushing more of the lighter material down the creek, down into them wide stretches like we were just working. Like right up in there. There's gonna be way more overburden right there than there is in these narrower stretches right here. And I also think I'm gonna find bigger gold right where I'm standing, all the way along here, and then just be, just where it breaks into that opening where it widens out over there, I think we're gonna be in better shape as far as finding any amount of clay. I did a couple of pans in here, or uh, shovel fulls in here when I was trying to build my dam. And I did hit a little bit of clay, but not much. So I think I just gotta get just a little bit deeper. I'll do a couple more test pans in this here area. And I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna do just fine. So let's get to work. Back in a bit. All right, we're right on the money. I did a test pan, or well, not yet, but I did a test hole right here. You can kind of still see it bleeding. In my second scoop, I already hit the clay. Look at, here's a look at the material sitting on top of that clay. Some bigger rocks and stuff that I just wasn't pulling out of the ground over there. It was real light wash, uh, you know, small light colored rocks like this stuff here. And, that, and hardly even any of this big. These rocks are way bigger and way heavier. They're sitting right on top of this clay layer right here. That's a really nice, stiff, stinky clay layer. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. I could sit up there and I could get a dozen pieces out of a pan all day long, but we're looking for better. Now I got my sluice back up and running here. Um, I don't think the water is getting any higher than it was before or lower. It's just kind of staying the same. But now that I have a little bit of clay, after I'll, I'll make a big pile of uh, tailings with clay and I can start packing this dam full here. Hopefully I can get it up high enough where I can just start shoveling right on my sluice. If not, we'll just keep classifying because uh, you know we can still move a decent amount of material. So let me get this one here panned down and we'll see if there's any gold in it. Back in a bit. All right, let's pan this stuff out, see if there's anything in it. I see what I mean about having quite a few bigger gravels in there. Just got to kind of mash up that clay in there. See how dirty that is? And hardly any of this stuff is river wash, it looks like. There's clay stuck to it. You got to get all that stuff off of there because I guarantee you there's gold in that stuff. That's what's nice about using, you know, either a classifier, you get to manipulate those rocks around a little bit or that screen on my sluice which is nice and i can just drop them right on top of there and just mash them right through the screen all the big balls of clay and this process is quite easy with this air super sluice here every once in a while just pull out some of them bigger rocks like that 
Oh yeah. And there's plenty of sands in there and there's a big uh, line of clay down at that bottom edge. You always want to run your finger down there when you're running with working with clay because that'll settle right down to the bottom and either your gold will stick to it and you're not getting your gold to go down to the bottom of the pan or you wash it right out with the clay. And we got that down there pretty close and there's a good amount of black sand in there. Holy cow, look at that. Here, let me pull that back. Yeah, that's a real nice amount of black sand, for sure. All right, let me throw this in my black pan. Oh, I can already see a nice piece of gold right there. Let me get this in my black pan and we'll take a look at it. Back in a bit. All right, we landed right on it. Um, it's exactly the way I thought it was gonna be, that there's gonna be more gold sitting on top of the clay. Just because of the narrowness of this creek right here, you can see how high the water gets by the debris left up in the up on the base of this tree right here. You see that? And the branches are going with the flow this way. And it's chewed all this up and out of here. But on this side of the creek, there's a gentle slope. So when the water is this high right here, that's all underwater over there and there's hardly any flow. There's more flow bouncing off of this, this outside bank here and roiling the water out just like this, clearing all the overburden off of this clay. Let me show you what we got in that pan right there. That's one pan right here. There are almost 30 pieces in there and some bigger ones. One pan. That is fan, absolutely fantastic. And I did a quick brush back and it, it's, there's hardly any real fine sand. Again, it's all that, um, that real coarse sand as you can see, but who cares? Look at the gold that's in there. That is crazy. So now that we found it, we're gonna dig to China. You know, maybe bring something home. I don't know, probably gold. So let me uh, get a whole pail of that stuff classified down, run it through the best sluice in the whole wide world right here. And we're gonna have something spectacular to look at shortly. Back in a bit. It's the Chris Lilly Rock of the Week. Black on one side, red, tan, and yellow on the other. What a fine specimen. You want that in the mail, Chris? Not today, mister. <laughs> Back in a bit. All right, a little video update. I got about half of that material run there. It was three quarters of a pail or so. But there's a huge difference between the amount of black sands in this location than there are in that location. That's what I'm looking for. So I think we're right on the money. I'm, I think I'm going to do one more pail before I do a clean up. Just because I think we'll have something special to see doing that. And we have some company. This is David Sorensen. He's a semi-retired architect. <laughs> and he's down here looking for some special rocks today. And he brought with him this here, this here pan called a turbo pan. Now, I've seen one of them used before and I tried it once and I wasn't very good at it at all. So he's going to be doing a little testing with that today. Uh, hopefully, maybe I'll learn something today, Dave. Hopefully, if we can teach a mason. <laughs> Yeah. Then we could teach anybody something. <laughs> <laughs> you buying that, Rigby? Not for a second. Back in a bit. All right, I've got that pail all run. And I'm, I was just letting this clean out just a little bit. And there is about an inch or so left of uh, sands left down on the bottom of that pail. So I wanted to run a test. Uh, just to make sure that I wasn't seeing things the first time. And we're not. Here's what was in that bottom inch of that pan right here. There's about 20 pieces in there, including that decent sized flake right there. So uh, we are still on it. So this should really be good. That was, like I said, about an inch in the bottom of that bucket. We ran three quarters of a pail. So hopefully that gold stays in there. I don't I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. I, this mat really performs quite well. So we're gonna quickly um, classify down another pail, get it run through there. Back in a bit. Good news, we got the crick up high enough where I can just put my screen on there 
and shovel. No more classifying. Now we're gonna be able to move way more material. That's a good thing. Back in a bit. This is the good stuff right here. See all that stuff that's stuck to them rocks? Big oh, yeah. little clay balls here. That's, I'm washing them with rocks off right on top of my screen, just like that. Most of this stuff, it comes off and it just kind of mashes onto the screen and the, and the crick and the roughness of the screen uh, does it for me. But every once in a while, you want to make sure you get all that clay off of the rocks because it's going to be stuck to it. So we're really, I've already got probably another full pail of classified material run through there in no time at all, just shoveling right onto that thing. I just swish my tailings right on and off and out of here. And uh, we're moving a lot of material. I'll do this for another half an hour and we'll see what it looks like. Back in a bit. All right, just to change things up, I'm gonna do a little cleanup. I've been shoveling for a while here and that stuff is blacker than black all the way down to the bottom. So I got my little wing nut turned there. I can pull my screen hopefully right up and out of there. Let some of this stuff on the sides wash down. See that? Just where these pipes were, it gets caught up on the ends there a little bit, but that's no big deal. Now, as you can see, we're not overly loaded with, with material in here, especially up top where the current's really ripping over the, over the slick plate there. So I'll leave that run just for a minute or two, get all the excess out, and I'll throw it in the pan. We'll take a look at it. Back in a bit. All right, we did a clean out. I got the sluice back up and running. And we've got quite the pile of black sand going here. Let me dump some of that out of there. And I just did a quick pan back because we're in the field. But look at this. That's about, I don't even know if that's an hour running right there. Look at the amount of gold in there. <laughs> There's lots and lots. We are on it. Uh, no pickers or nothing I don't think I could even feel. Probably not. Well, maybe I can feel that one there, but I would definitely won't be able to pick it up. But we're on the money. So I'm going to keep pounding. There's my, my holes getting pretty big. But there's so much material here to work, we will not have a problem staying busy. He's got the turbo pan going over here. And he's uh, he's getting some nice gold too. He's, oh, not putting, oh yeah. he's not putting the material through that that we are but he's still getting gold and that's what it's all about doing what you like let's do it because we like it back in a bit let's take a look at how the turbo pan worked out well there it is i'm back to my old pan <laughs> uh, i can process the material a lot quicker probably because i'm so used to it i'm still trying to get used to that but i like this old thing it's flexible and uh, i can put a lot of material in it uh, doesn't process as much as Jason's sluice, but I'm having fun out here in the sun and Rigby's, uh, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't feel bad. Parker Schnabel doesn't run as much material as my sluice. <laughs> Back in a bit. All right, we've been pounding material through this thing, just tons and tons of material, and I've been shoveling tailings. It's a never-ending process, so what I'm going to do is because this thing is so loaded with black sand, I'm gonna do a cleanup quick, and I'm gonna repeat the process. Uh, I do have quite a bit of black sands in my uh, container already, and this is gonna add probably another two inches to that, and we'll do that uh, another time, and then we're gonna boot scoot out of here so we can run that over my cleanup sluice. Let's do that. Just like that. See if I can turn this here wing nut. And I can't. <laughs> there we go. Take the screen off. Throw the legs. Hold on the pull down the mat. And I've been doing test pans here and there. And there is some really, really nice looking gold in here. Some wiry looking gold too. It's getting better as I'm uh, working towards this big rock right here. So that mat is cleaned out. I'll take this black sand right here. Pretty decent amount. I'll throw it in my container. And then back at it. Bang in a bit. 
Now, I know what a lot of you guys out there in TV land are thinking. Well, Flower Gold Wizard, check around that big rock right there. Well, I wanted to dig that big hole right there first. And I rolled that big rock over in the hole. And I'm not going to throw that right in my sluice right away. I threw the material that was under and around that big rock in my pan. Because I'm excited to find out what was in and around it. So let me pan that out. I'll throw another one on there. Rigby's taking a break. And we'll take a look at it in a minute. Back in a bit. And here it is. I got it out of my Garrett pan into this little black pan. And there's about, there's about 20 or so. All little tiny dots. So it's nothing any more spectacular than we have been digging out of this hole here. I think this whole deposit here has got about the same but there are some nice little wiry pieces I've been pulling out of the top foot or foot and a half or so. I don't think the gold's getting any better as the deeper I go. Uh, once you get down to this orange uh, yellow layer, it seems to peter out just a little bit. So I'm gonna step in the hole and work this way. It'll be closer to the sluice too. We are moving some material. This is gonna be the best cleanup I've had in a while. I could tell already, back in a bit. All right, I moved. An absolute mountain of material through that sluice today. And we are just, we're crushing it. Just crushing it. Every test pan's better than the next. I mean, you know, or close to it. <laughs> but I'm good tired. I've been shoveling nonstop for a long time here. I'm going to give her one more half an hour on this run. We're going to clean it up. We're going to get the heck out of here. We got a long ride. He's already dozing over there. And we got some chicken in the truck. <laughs> so let me run another half an hour if I can. I'll pick it back up then. Back in a bit. Four hours later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I've got a whole bunch of concentrates. I've got my cleanup sluice. Got a fresh cold one. Let's get this baby fired up. Ooh. <laughs> Let's get this baby fired up. We're going to see how much gold's in it. Back in a bit. Ooh wee, I jumped the gun a little bit. What I meant to say was what I'm going to do is classify that stuff down, my kitchen strainer type utensil, into bigs and littles. And I have. There's the bigs. I haven't panned it out yet. And here's the littles. I'll feed a bunch of this on there right quick. Like such. Here we are. I'll throw a couple more scoops on there and kind of let that stuff clean itself out nice and slow so I get all the gold. And I'll get the pan and the big stuff. I did see some nice pieces in there today. I even got myself another picker. But it's in my uh, it's in my little snuffer jar over there. So I want to get this stuff here cleaned up. And then we'll add all that to this. And we'll take a look at it. Back in a bit. As usual, here's the gold that was in the bigs. None. <laughs> but on a good note, I've only got about four little scoops and tablespoons in there. And this stuff is loaded with gold. Loaded. Maybe I can show you without that glare a little bit more. It's quite easy for me to see being up close and live and personal. But I'm telling you, that is full, just chock full of gold. This is going to be one heck of a clean out. Hey, Moose, he didn't get to come along today. Maybe next time, little buddy. Back in a bit. All right, it's all run. Now, this camera just never seems to show exactly how much gold is in that thing. But there's quite a bit in there. I don't know if it's the color of that mat or the lighting or what it is, but I can see all kinds of gold in there. So what I'm going to do, get my finger out of the way, I'm going to hook this here camera up to my, my holder here. We're going to do a little clean out. I'll even show you how I do it. I'll grab this camera and bend it up like such. What I'll do is I'll turn my water off. They're just about all the way off. And I'll put it in this here bucket, just like that. Then I'll just turn the water back on a little bit. Now rinse the mats out, just like that. 
And done. Gold free, nice clean mat. I'll save those tailings. We'll see what's in it. Back in a bit. All right, we got it. Here's the gold from today. It's spectacular. Quite the haul, I would say, wouldn't you? Including this picker that I snuffered up while I was mining today. Now, a guy I was mining with said, that's not really a picker. Well, I tell you what, if I can again, I can pick that baby up with these big old meat hooks of mine. There, I got it. See that? If I can pick it up, it's a picker. Doink. Let me throw my macro lens on this baby. Take a look at this gold up close. Look at all that stuff. Some of those are nice little chunky, wiry looking pieces too. Look at them. Ooh wee, is that fantastic. Where's that darn picker? Is that it right there? There it is right there. Ooh, is that chunky looking? It's all bent over and misshapen. But I am very, very happy. My finger is three inches wide, by the way, so that's a lot of gold. And that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Flower Gold Wizards. We took the big four-hour ride again, and we got another picker. That's our third one for the year. That's exciting. I, I hope we get some more this year. I think we're going to. We also got a nice pile of flower powder fine gold. Those VDR mats work great. So until the next episode, like, share, subscribe. Please do leave a comment. It helps build my channel. Flower Gold Wizards, out. Oh.